Well, welcome back to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures. My name's Alex, and welcome to a sunny morning in Lapland. So, last time we made it to Nordcap with Ryan and Nelly and Joel, and from there we've headed south, where we start off today in Sarasota, Northern Finland. Right, let's crack on. I've never seen this big frost forming on the map. Tonight's Northern Lights photos were some of the craziest images I've ever produced. A combination of the Northern Lights and along with artificial local lighting led to these surreal and colourful images. Gold. Fan is definitely snow encrusted this morning. As is Will's Adventures and Jewels. There's a nice little spot hiding way back here. Could be some snowy encrusted vans this morning. Right, another morning at Sarasoka. Gonna, uh, before I finish the engine preheat, what are we on? We're on 73 degrees, should start. It's nine, minus 19 this morning. Excellent, right. No defrosted. Well, one of my subscribers recommend Eddie's Grill, so let's go check it out. Right, well, I did mention at one point that I'd lost my passport. It still is lost, but I've just finished filling out all the documentation on the government website and uh, not for a new passport I'm gonna do when I get back to the UK but it's for an emergency travel document which is sort of like a well it is what it says emergency travel document and you have to put your sort of your route driving back to it to the UK um, yeah actually really easy to fill in it took about 20 minutes need a photo you do need to put how you're driving back in which is a little bit of a problem so you're only allowed transit through five countries on the way back and the route is six um, so when I'm in sort of central Europe I've got to avoid the Netherlands because if I avoid the Netherlands and go Germany Belgium France then I'm within the five transit countries I don't know how if you were the other side of Europe and you were driving back how you would do it because you just you wouldn't be able to get the transit to countries I mean central Europe you're unlikely to get the passport ever kind of checked um, so you could drive through a country you're not meant to be in but then again you're breaking your passport rules which is kind of not always a good thing to do yeah but I do have to go to Oslo to pick it up which is quite a way away from here it's a windy day today at the top of the mountain so what am I doing in a minute um, fortunately it's getting towards the end of my trip so I need to be back in the UK in about eight days, I think, maybe nine. Still need to go get my passport from uh, Norway and Oslo. I could have potentially got it from Sweden and Stockholm, but it's slightly more on, um, on the route back, but they're, they're both kind of on the route back anyway. And since I reported it lost to the police in Norway, 
and my police report is from Norway, I thought it'd be best to um, pick up a new passport from Norway. I mean, I say that whilst I'm currently in Finland and I've got to go probably through Finland, through Sweden to get to Norway, but hey ho, that is, is what it is. Um, yeah, and it might be quite nice to drive the Norwegian um, route south or drive most of the, the route on the maybe the E4 on the Swedish side and then come across and cross into Norway that way. I haven't quite decided yet, I need to look at the road conditions. As the driving on the suite of the E4 is very easy to get like a lot of miles done very quickly. Um, but on the way back I have to pop over to a town on the border of Finland and Sweden because EcoFlow has sent me uh, the new River 2 Pro power bank and I need to make a video. And uh, it was great that <laughs> like, I like I like EcoFlow products, I like making videos with them. This trip I use the, the power banks daily to be honest. The, uh, I use the River Pro on my um, the laptop for day-to-day -day use. There's a whole backup Turn system. Right into Wolfania, and uh, the River Two, uh, the little small one, I use as my sort of dr drone charging station, which for me is really quite convenient because it means I don't have to. For 18 miles, continue straight yeah. on. Oh, which means I don't have to uh, have the charger hanging around all the time and loose, especially in the back of the van, it's slung around. So having it just glued to the top of the, the River Two unit also means I can get, get an extra. Also means I can get an extra 10 amp of charging um, out of the van. And I put it on the cigarette lighter in the cab, which means I get an extra 10 amps, um, opposed to that going from the DC to DC chargers, then through into, yeah, it means I can get more power off the engine charging. So I need to make a video of that. Um, considering it's going to be delivered on February, no, the video needs to be out for February 26th, and it is currently the 23rd, but it's not been delivered yet, which is not ideal. So uh, I'll have to do them a video pretty quickly. So I, uh, I left my EcoFlow uh, River Pro in the cab last night, so it got down to three degrees and then the cold temperature wouldn't allow it to charge. So my way of getting to charge is I've turned the foot heat, the, um, the feet heater, cabin heater on, blocked it up and because there is a fan on the other side of the unit which draws it through to cool it down, you can turn the fan off automatic mode and put it on manual. So I've manual, manually turned the fan on and uh, it's now sucking hot air from the foot well through the unit and it's warmed up from three degrees to 21 degrees internally so now it's able to charge it's obviously taken 15 20 minutes to do that well the british embassy in oslo approved the uh temporary passport travel document in about 45 minutes which is good unfortunately it is 1300 miles away and you need to book an appointment for collection you can't just rock up to the embassy and uh, go get it. So I've booked it for March 1st, which is a bit of a problem when I'm currently up near Sarasota in Finland because I need to wait for a package to be delivered for an EcoFlow video. And it's now the March 20, no, it's now February 23rd. And it's at the bottom of Finland, this package. And I don't know if it's gonna get here on time before I need to drive south. So that's awkward. Or it's gonna be a lot of driving in a very short amount of time. Well, I'm not planning on going anywhere this evening, but uh, uh, it's probably like this other nights, but the gear um, box is frozen, or the gear stick is frozen. I presume, well, well, I don't know, the engine preheater seems to negate that issue. Well, post-pub meal, pizza, air fryer, it's gonna be good. Fits perfectly. I would love a bigger inverter in the van, not so much so I can um, run more high power items, mainly just so I could have a bigger air fryer for bigger pizzas. So many of you might have gathered that traveling in the Nordics is not cheap. And, and because of that, when I can, I take on appropriate partners which are either relevant to me or relevant to the channel. So once again, I'm working with Rosetta Stone. And Rosetta Stone is a language learning platform, which for me professionally 
is quite relevant. I spend most of my professional life leading expeditions overseas, so language is arguably quite important. However, I found out from a young age I can't learn language academically, but I can learn it organically reasonably well, so traveling overseas is a way that I've been able to pick up different languages. However, what I found with the Rosetta Stone platform and the app which I particularly use is the way it teaches you is quite organic. Opposed to learning what one word means in a different language, you're looking at the words in different languages and associating them with actions. Ellos comen sandwiches. Associating with them with pictures and objects, or learning them how to pronounce them or listening to them. It also tests your own pronunciation as well. El come arroz. So there are currently 24 languages available on Rosetta Stone, uh, and I'm currently learning Latin American Spanish, which isn't really relevant for this trip up in the Arctic. Um, Swedish is also available, which I might look into for next winter. If you are interested in Rosetta Stone, then there are a few different options you can go for. And there's a monthly subscription service, which does give you access to all 24 languages. Although language is a long-term investment in yourself. So just every the lifetime subscription is a more cost-effective option if you want to learn long-term language. But if you want to find out any more or use my affiliate link, please check out the pinned comment or the description below. And that helps me out. Thank you very much. And let's get back to the rest of the video. Some very frozen looking alloys this morning. Right, let's put the engine preheater on. I'm not going to turn the engine on, but let's see what the temperature of the coolant is. Minus 11. Also minus 11 outside. Look at that flex. Full tank of fuel in, in the Nordics. So I think I know why the gearbox is like this. On the drive back up to the top of the mountain, and there's loads and loads of drifting snow which is uh, really, really soft, so you can just drive through it. But there were a few larger bits which were sort of up to kind of the grill of the van, up to the bonnet, which I smashed through because it was fun and it explodes everywhere and it looks cool. Unfortunately, no footage. But um, I imagine I shot a bunch of that up, that snow up into the under bit of the van, including the top of the gearbox, looking in the engine bay. And then that gearbox is warm, it's melted and then it's refrozen after I parked up. So. Hopefully an engine preheat and then having the engine idle in for a bit, it should uh, thaw it out. So up here, opposed to being really low humidity and dry, there's quite, quite a lot of high, it's quite a high humidity. So you get all of this rime and frost building up. Well, the preheater is pretty much finished. It's 74 degrees. That is still rock solid, but let's start the engine and see if just that also warms up the gearbox. Yeah, I guess leave it idling for a bit and hopefully that helps warm the gearbox. Let's get under here and have a look. Ugh. Well, you can see the exhaust is going out. That, that might not help. Yeah, that might be why it froze a little bit. Well, probably that doesn't help. That's the bit I wanted. Probably going to be way quicker for me if I just use the eco flow. And a heat gun. Right, well, it's dripping now, so let's have a quick try.
There we go. <sighs> Sorted. Yeah, so I think moisture just got onto the very end of it and um, that thawed it out pretty quick. So it's still, it's still a bit cold. It's definitely not springing back as quickly, quick as it usually would. Uh, yes, actually they got updated, so they were in, in Rom and Yemi at the minute, uh, but they said they're out for delivery. So, um, I mean, Rom and Yemi is the centre at left, they left there at 10, I'm sure like Rom and Yemi's hours away from where they're getting delivered. Right, currently making it down to the bottom of the hill in Sarasota, because um, Ryan's parents have uh, turned up. Although at the minute, just because I've just moved off of that car park, I actually have no brakes. That's my brakes fully on and nothing is happening. Oh, there we go. There's some planked. It wasn't because uh, it was a slippy road. It was because the, uh, the ice was just formed around them. I presume the frost grows between the uh, discs and the pad needs to get worn away for a second or two. Well, uh, just sat down to dinner with Ryan's family who've turned up and Joel wasn't, didn't leave the car park with us because he was just uh, putting his snowball away. But, turns out he's got an issue. He can't get the van to work. He thinks it's not firing on a cylinder and it keeps stalling any time he puts it in gear. Have a Joel. Hello. <laughs> right, back to food. After dinner, we returned to Joel's van to try and figure out what the issue was. Is here if I hold the fob for you? Uh, unfortunately, he also managed to snap the key in the ignition, and with transits, you need to have the physical key in the ignition and the key throb nearby to actually turn the vehicle on, and you need the key to open the bonnet. After playing around and tinkering, we couldn't really figure out what was uh, wrong with it. We tried taken out the mass airflow sensor and looked at other things with no change. On a few test runs it would drive billowing out black smokes but any real power or any real stress on the engine it would stall. What was it outside today? Oh, minus 19. Right, preheater on. Yeah, a bit of a chilly one this morning. Let's get the engine heated and get ready to go. I'm gonna be leaving Wheels Adventures, Ryan and Nelly, and uh, and Joel as well. Unfortunately, I would like to stick around to help Joel and make sure he gets his van fixed, but I really kind of have to leave to start the drive home. So I'm gonna go say hello to them, get the engine warm and get ready to go. Probably while my door doesn't like shutting. Right, minus 19 outside, 74 degrees coolant. There we go, no problems at all. Have to have right frozen, no, that's not frozen this morning, which is nice. Now I kind of want to see what, how fast the air, uh, focus, how fast the engine temperature rise, engine, temperature rises. Starting to go up. Store out the cab. Store out the cab. Big screen's on. Probably one of the last cold mornings of the trip to be honest. Yeah, it'd be sad if I go home. Oh well it won't be sad if I go home. Right.
See you guys. See ya. Have a good drive. Thank you very much. Only 2,000 miles to go. <laughs> yeah. Right, have a good day skiing. Will do. Bye. Right, let's get driving. Right, the sunglasses are on because it is sunny. That was a pretty, fairly obvious, stupid statement, Alex. So, this is getting towards the end of the trip. Things I want to do next winter, because I'm gonna come back, is I need some sort of snow transport. Um, yes, I need some sort of snow transport. What do we think? I've looked around, and there are some electric, Sort of not snowmobiles but like electric snow bikes it looks sort of looks like a cross between a, a motorbike with a rear track however i think they end up being classed as as, uh, as as snowmobiles up here kind of seems impossible for a foreigner to be able to use to get the licenses or permits required in any of the scandinavian in any of the nordic countries to be able to use a snowmobile privately could the other i guess the other option could be a fat e-bike that could be a good option but i don't think i could really play around snowmobile trails with that while some of the snow bikes it seems you can um, what if i replaced the rear wheel of an e-bike with a, a track where does that fit in the law well if anyone's got any information I know it's about the other forms of sort of like electric snow-based transport because I think it would just be fun on some of the park up so I'd love to go out for like an hour blast around on some trails and then come back I can stick the unit on charge and do that I mean that would be great and it would also make walking to that Cairn 50 kilometers a lot easier if anyone's got any, recommend any recommendations do, do say Time to do my recycling and then get my money off to do my shopping. Three point three three euro. Free skis, anyone? Their bindings are removed, but uh, not gonna not gonna take them. But. Uh, they seem to be purposely placed there with their bindings removed. I don't know if like free driver wants them or someone's forgotten them. I don't know. I think I'm currently driving on an emergency runway. It's very flat, straight. It's marked at the end, and it just suddenly opened up. I don't know if that was like an emergency runway or something. It just seemed to suddenly open up pretty wide and be absolutely straight narrow and then uh, some signs I hadn't seen before and then close again And that is pretty much going to end this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've liked what you've seen and you want to leave me a message, feel free to comment below or give the video a like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do consider doing so. And you can check out some of the other content, like how I modified my van to be able to work up in here, or just this Arctic series or my previous Arctic series. Another way you can support the channel is this whole trip is supported by Roma. I've been playing around with some of their Extreme Series batteries, um, which are basically cold weather lithium and how they get on up in this environment. And I have, because of that, I have an affiliate link for them. So if you're interested in their Extreme batteries or their normal ones, purchases using the affiliate link do help out my channel and help me fund silly adventures like this. But 
Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.